Hello and welcome in Soccer We Trust heads. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe as I sit down with a Champions League winner. Chelsea have made the trip stateside for their preseason tour. And when opportunity comes to knock, and you better believe in Soccer We Trust is opening the door. So with the Blues here for their special U.S. tour, today I've got the good fortune to speak with an extra special guest. A Champions League winner, FIFA Club World Cup champion, England international, and Christian Pulisic's best friend from Portsmouth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to welcome in Mason Mount. Mason, how are we doing, man? Nice to see you, Heath. I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Now, before we get into this, I just have to say on our show, we're nominated uh, yeah. for Best Sports Podcast category in the People's Choice Podcast Award. So for anybody that's watching and or listening to this, we appreciate all of you. Do us a favor. Hop in and make sure you nominate us to advance to the final round. To nominate in Soccer We Trust, go to podcastawards.com slash app slash sign up and then toggle down the sports category. The whole process takes less than 60 seconds. We've included the link at the top of the episode as well. So make sure you get in on that. Now, Mason. Before we get into any other stuff, I've got to ask you, you know, on our show, it's, it's myself, former U.S. international. We have two other U.S. international, former U.S. internationals on the show. And we always talk about the jersey swaps, right? Our yeah. favorite ones, the ones we regret, regret not getting. Is there a favorite jersey swap you had and then also one that perhaps you regret not getting when you had the opportunity to? Yeah, I've got a favorite. Um, I was able to swap with Luka Modric last season. So, I mean, he's one of Ballon d'Or, he's one of the all-time great midfielders and I looked up to him as a young player um, and obviously lucky enough to play against him. And yeah, he's definitely one that when I go up in, into my room and I look at all the shirts I've swapped, I, I'm, I'm getting that one out first to have a look at. So um, I like that. Yeah. Did, you, did you approach him? Was there a pre-arrangement to any of that? Or was it just like, uh, you know, did you chase him down? Did he chase you down? No. I mean, how, how did it take place? There was a, there was a, a pre-arrangement with, because obviously we've got um, Kova in the team and he's played with him international and, and for Real Madrid. So I just said to him, is there any chance you could get Lucas shirt for me? I'd absolutely buzz it. I'll be buzzing if I get it. Um, and then on the pitch afterwards, he come up to me and was like, yeah, let's, let's swap. So, yeah, oh. it was buzzing. What a feeling that must have yeah. been, having it actually take place. Were you thinking about it after the game of saying, is it actually going to happen? How do I make this happen? Because I remember, whether at the club level or international, just, you know, after the game, sometimes you have a prearranged, you talk in the tunnel or you know somebody. But then when it actually happens, it's got to be a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, – I think, we, yeah, we won the game. So I was kind of – just worrying about that that we've just won um and then obviously he's come up to me and said it and um i've got a shirt so uh, yeah it was it was a good feeling i like that now let, let's shift gears a little bit we we know you got your free kick technique from watching ronaldo we're going to throw this up on the screen for anybody that's listening to this in yeah. audio form you won't get a chance to see but it's a video of you striking a ball emulating uh ronaldo now are there any other parts of your game that you've Stolen from other That's players or borrowed from other players and taken inspiration from the ball by the valve yeah. and it moves. So what do you do? Top corner, top bins. The voice. It's a... oh. um, what a strike, by the way. What a strike. It's, it's a good one. I haven't, I haven't managed to do one like that in a few years. So hopefully, I, hopefully it happens soon. Um, have I taken anything? Yeah, I'm, you always, I mean, I, I'm. I'm a person who studies football that's very much into my football. So if any um, things coming out, say on Netflix about a footballer or um, having that insight to their, to their life and, and what goes on and how they are as a person, I always try to watch that and then take any little bits from it um, because you always getting better. You always want to improve your game. And that's, that's not just what you do on the pitch. It's off the pitch as well. So yeah, always trying to, trying to do that. You've had a, a busy summer being a spectator at various sporting events, Wimbledon, F1, Major League Baseball. What's, what is your favorite sport to watch outside of, uh, outside of soccer? Yeah, I was very, I was lucky to get to quite a few sporting events this summer. I love, I love the F1. Um, I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm into it a lot at the moment. Um, did it start from the series or did that get you into it? Or were, were you like previous had a little bit of, uh, yeah, you know? I, I had a little bit of, uh, knowledge, but not too much. And then when the series come out, I, I watched it all. Um, and then I really got hooked into it and 
once you learn about the characters and everything that goes on with it, you, you learn so much. So um, I, I've been to two races now, so hopefully I can get to a few more. Do you have a favorite driver? Um, I have a few. I have a few favorites. Um, oh, come on. I knew you would say that because, my, you're, you know, you're a celebrity. You're famous. You can't have one favorite, but you got to give me my, one. You got to give me one and rule out the other. So the others yeah. that maybe your friends might be like, oh, come on, man. I'm I, um, I know Lando, so I'm always wanting to do well. And, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a really good guy and, and a close mate of mine. So I always want him to do well. Um, but Max as well. I, I'm, Red Bull really looked after me over the last two races and, and – so I want, obviously, him to win and, and do well. I like that. And that's Lando Norris you're talking about, correct? Yeah. yeah. Just so I know. Yeah. And um, uh, who's your favorite athlete in, in world sport? Oh, there's um, – I like a lot of sports. I actually watch a lot of basketball. Um, whenever, the game, uh, whenever a game is on in England and it's not too late, I, I try to watch it. And obviously the last the last season to watch Steph and, and the Warriors what they done was was unbelievable. So I'm a I'm a big Steph fan, um, and yeah, I'm, I just love his game. Now you're you're obviously on tour. Dodger Stadium is where some preseason has taken place. What has a better concession, Stamford Bridge or or the Dodger Stadium? You know, have you tried any of the food they have in the stadium? They've got quite a, an array of hot dogs, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, have, have you had a chance to taste any of the local uh the local foods in the stadium no i didn't manage to get any of the food um because the game the game wasn't on it was i just had a tour around the empty stadium they were actually doing um like an ice cream stand because every game they win or they go higher up they do like an ice cream for all the staff so i actually jumped in the queue and got a bit of ice cream which was which was unbelievable it was top top ice cream so i didn't have any of the hot dogs i had the ice cream and it was very nice Fair enough. Uh, let's talk about this this preseason tour. You know, uh, player fatigue is obviously something that's getting talked about more and more. Uh, does it feel like you get enough of an off season? Is your body aware of it? I mean, do you think it's enough? I mean, just elaborate a little bit on on just the off season and player fatigue that's happening over the last special year, especially since the pandemic. There's there's been a lot of games um, over the last couple of years, but as players that's someone you have to deal with and and what you do off the pitch the recovery side of it has to you have to be so on the ball um to be able to go every single three days playing another game another game travel away from home come back um but when you do get them three weeks it's just really focusing on just letting go and and switching off totally and um i feel like i managed to do that and spending time with the family and just relaxing and then takes your mind off it and when the, the time's coming to, to get back in that mode of focus and, and getting ready to, to start working hard again, you, you just switch back into that into that mind space. And um, as soon as you get that first session underway, you're back into it. You know, I, I went through plenty of preseasons and off seasons and whatnot. And we know plenty of people that hate preseason, that hate training. They hate all of it, but are show up on match day. And, you know, you have the whole array of, of, of yeah. teammates in a locker room. Are you a preseason lover? Do you love to be sort of with the team, the camaraderie of it, in the yeah. kind of in close quarters, double sessions, things like that? Are you a fan of that, or are you more like, let's get through this so we can start the season? No, I love it. I love it. Um, this is the first proper preseason that I've had over the last few years, so just trying to make the most of it. When you're in a preseason, I think the big focus is, as a group, just trying to just be together and, and um, getting through it as a group because you, you know about them tough pitch runs, them get to the whole other side of the pitch, run all the way back. We were doing that the other day. Um, and I just, I love it. It's Are you it's in the front tough. of that line? Are you, 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 you lead that I'm pace? Pushing. Or, uh, okay. I'm pushing. I'm trying to get to the front. Um, but yeah, that's, I just love that feeling of being able to, to keep going, even though you feel so tired or you, your legs are, feel like jelly. Um, and then you look to the person next to you and they're, they, they're in the same boat as you, but you're dragging each other through it. Um, that's that's the type of preseason that we're going through. What's your favorite uh, American food? Are you getting chances to have dinners out with the team? Or, you know, I, I know that you want to have some sort of con controlled environment, but uh, is, there an, is there, not that we are famous for our American foods, but is there, is there a food or a restaurant or something you, you've got to go to when you come to L.A.? Um, 
Yeah, I went to a few restaurants. Um, most of the food's pretty similar, I feel like. But I actually, when I was here for the week of my break, um, is it Denny's that does the breakfast? Yeah, yeah. I went yeah. there one yeah. breakfast, and I've never seen a bigger bowl of yeah. breakfast in my life. It was huge, but um, yeah, that's an experience that I haven't had before. I like that. I like that. So, uh, it, you know, what's your favorite part about being stateside? Is is the are, are is the Chelsea fan in the UK different than than in the US? Uh, you know, kind of what's your favorite part about about being in the US right now? Yeah, I mean, to be able to meet the the Chelsea fans here um, and be able to speak to them because most of the time you don't get to see them or speak to them and they're, they're here, they're supporting, they're shouting for us after training. It's, it's brilliant to see. So um, they're going to be supporting us at the games and, mm-hmm. and seeing us play live. Um, but yeah, there's no different. They're, they're still there. They're still as um as crazy as the fans back home and, and that's what we love to see you know is christian pulisic uh different when we're here does he kind of walk with a little bit of a swag <laughs> to him does he try to is he, is he a little bit more the man around you guys now or 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 is he the same guy that you've always known um no no he's the same guy but he's home you know what i mean yeah. he's, he's back home this is where he's from um he knows everybody we always just said push him to the front of the queue if we're going anywhere saying this is yours it's your home so you speak to everybody, um, and he's he's obviously Captain America, so he's loving it. Um, and and we are we all are as a group, just being here and being able to train. And the sun's out. Uh, we're working hard. Um, what more can you want? Uh, Pulisic's a bit of an enigma to to U.S. fans. As someone uh, who knows him well, what's something surprising about him? Because we have, you know, a certain contingent. We're seeing him grow up as as a person, from sort of a a, a young footballer into being a man and. He's going through that personal growth. And so we see it, body language changing and going through all these things, both club and international level. What's something surprising about him or what's something about him that that, that you found surprising as you've gotten to know him over the years? Yeah, we've we've definitely grown up together over the last three years. And um, I remember when he first got on that coach when I think we was in Japan or we was in Asia. Um, and he was like, he was quite quiet. He was um, on his own at the time. And then, as I started, you get to know someone, you, they come out of their shell. And um, that's definitely what I've seen over the last couple of years. He's maturing and 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 you can see the confidence within him. And it's brilliant to see. Um, hopefully when we play each other at the World Cup, he, he doesn't have that confidence as much. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going we're, hey, we're to get to those questions in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a little bit. You yeah. know, you, you had the euphoria of winning Champions League in 21, FIFA Club World Cup uh, champions as well. But then there was heartbreak with Chelsea finishing runners-up in the EFL Cup as well as the FA Cup, and then being eliminated in the, uh, in the quarterfinal stage of the Champions League. How would you rate a season like that? Because obviously for fans, they want it all, right? They want to cobble it up. They have a high expectation. But for you personally and collectively as a group, there's still a lot of positives you take out of a season like that. So how would you reflect on on, on that season? Yeah, we managed to win um, some top, top trophies. And you can only get into them competitions if you win the Champions League. And, and obviously we managed to do that the season before. And we want more as a group. We're a group that's that has that winning mentality that always manages to get themselves in a, in the opportunity to win things. Um, we lost two finals and, and obviously got knocked out in the Champions League, which is, is disappointing and it's very hard to take. Um, but you're in that position and it can go either way. So this season we're, we're going to be exactly the same, pushing and, and wanting more. And, and that's the type of group we are. There was a lot of uh, distraction and uncertainty around the ownership change at Chelsea. And how have things changed under Bully's acquisition? And what does it mean for, for the players in the locker room to just have at least some of that off to the side? Yeah, obviously a lot of, a lot of stuff happened last season. Um, but for us as players, all we can focus on is what we do on the pitch and our performances. And we managed to keep that at a high level. We did obviously lose a few games here and there, but... Um, we managed to stay focused and now that um, everything has, has been sorted out and um, I think it's so exciting to see what happens in the future. We're, as a club, we're, we're looking forward. Um, we obviously want to win things, as I said, and, and hopefully that continues moving forward because it's, it's so exciting to be around at the moment. 
Now we'd love it if Christian Pulisic won this award as 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 fans of of the U.S. men's national team. But you were named Chelsea Player of the Year the past two seasons. Are are you going for uh, the back to back to back? Uh, is that is that on the goal list? Do you have personal goals for this upcoming season? Yeah, I, I never set um, individual goals like that. I mean, my individual goals are how many assists I can get in a season and how many goals I can score. Um, and I feel like if you do that, then then the other awards come with it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm obviously very pleased with what happened last season and to be able to win that and it's voted by the fans as well. So it means it means so much to me. Does a day go by that you don't, that you don't think about your assist uh, to Kai Havertz in the Champions League final? Is something you think about a lot? Um, no, maybe some days go by where I don't think about it, but then when I do, you have to you have to have a look at what happened um, because it's such a blur. I, I swear it's such a blur during the game and looking back now because uh, it happened so quick. Um, but I reckon Kai's definitely looking at his goal more than I'm looking at my assist. I reckon. You think he's got that saved as like a yeah, like a, a book bookmark and yeah. things like that on his phone on his computer. He's probably got that within two clicks, right? He can get to that video. I, I see him on his phone sometimes, and I look over and <laughs> he's watching the goal. So, uh, yeah, he, he watches it all the time. Uh, I like that. I like that. So, what's the objective uh, for the upcoming Champions League campaign? We want to win it again. Um, that's that's every every single campaign we're in, every single competition. You want to you want to win. You wouldn't be in that position if you if you don't want to set that target to get all the way to the end. Um, so that's our goal, and and we nearly did it last season to get to the next to the next round and. But Real Madrid were obviously a top, top team and they managed to turn it around quite late on and then, and then go and win it. So um, we learned from that and, and what happened and we want to do the same as what we did two years ago. Well, I got to say that for a while in the U.S., you were enemy number one for the U.S. fan because there was a, that people were convinced that if you're on the field, Christian Pulisic can't play because you guys play in similar positions. As he's gone through his evolution, then the draw comes out for the World Cup and now we've got... You know, Christian Pulisic in, in, an, in, a, in an English locker room. Has there been any conversation? I mean, what was the reaction when when uh, England and the, and the U.S. were drawn together in, in a World Cup? Um, yeah, we were both watching it at the same time. And I think he already come out and said, I, was, I think I was the first person who messaged him. I, I literally messaged him straight away as soon as I saw the draw. Um, and I think he was at home with his dad. So um, it was it was just, it's obviously so exciting. You, you're playing in a World Cup and... And then you get drawn against each other. Um, it's still a long way to go. We've got a lot, a lot of, of football to play before that, but it's always something that's in your mind, and, and we're looking forward to it. Has it been friendly, or have you guys thrown a few jabs at each other? Has there been any trash talking? Is that still to come? I mean, give us a little preview. There's got to be some stakes. You can't just let a, an American guy infiltrate your locker room and then not have some sort of bet on the line going into this. You know, if you go back to the last times. U.S. and England have played. There's got to be some something on the line here, right? We can make the bet here if you want, but I'm just curious if you guys have been trash talking each other. Um, no, not yet. It's not started yet. I feel like if, when it starts to get closer and closer, then it, then we'll start talking about it. Um, me and him are we're a massive on our golf, um, so we've been we've been playing a lot recently. So okay. um, we'll be speaking about it on the golf course, and um, yeah, as I said, it's it's very exciting. Have you gotten Have you gotten a chance to get out on on the course with Gareth Bale, who's obviously out here now in uh, in Los Angeles? <laughs> no, no, not yet. No, I know the course is out here, unbelievable, but um, no, I haven't played. Yeah, you got to get up to some of those courses up in Palos Verdes that overlook the water and things like that. But uh, I'm not sure if you'll have uh, time to play no, a no. bunch of rounds while you're here. Now, I got to ask you this: U.S. plays England in the World Cup on on Black Friday here, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, if there is a jersey swap that you were to, to get in a match like that, who would you go for? Is there anybody from the U.S. men's national team that you're aware of, that you like, that you admire or would want to have a, a, a jersey swap opportunity with? And don't say Pulisic. Come on. <laughs> go a layer well, deeper. I'm going to swap with him, of course. Okay, well, then, this, you know, you could do My that boy. with your first jersey. But what, what about the second one? Um, yeah, a, a lot of the players play in Europe. I, I obviously know... Um, Gio Reyna, McKinney, um, they're young players that are coming through and um, that have been doing great things. Um, so, yeah, as, as a young player myself, you look at these players and you can see what they're doing at their, at their own clubs. Um, but, yeah, I'll be swapping with Chris. Come on. 
Okay, that's kind of a, it's kind of a boring answer, but one that I can respect and understand. Oh, Mason, thank you so much for joining us on In Soccer We Trust. We obviously appreciate all the time that you're taking. We wish you all the best. And when I said that uh, uh, you were enemy number one, I meant it from the best place possible. It means you're having great performances and playing well, and and we know that you're close with Christian Pulisic. And wish you all the best for this upcoming season. And thank you for uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.